In this example we've got a pipe with a flow going down it. The pipe starts out with a cross-sectional area of 0.1 meters squared and a mean velocity of 0.01 meters per second. And then the diameter of the pipe is reduced to a new area of 0.01 meters squared. And what we want to find is what is the discharge at point one and what is the new velocity at point two. So to do that, we're going to think about the principles of fluid flow and continuity. So where we're going to start is by thinking that the flow going through any system is the volume per unit time. So if you want to think about the flow of fluid through the system, that's the volume of fluid going through the system per unit time. So if we think about what that means in a pipe, what we're basically doing is saying in a particular period of time how much fluid is moving past that point in the pipe. So if we wanted to calculate that, the volume of fluid that's gone past that point in a certain period of time is going to be the volume which is going to be the area of the pipe times by the length of the volume that's gone through divided by the time it's taken for that volume to go, go through which tells us that the discharge as well as being volume per unit time is also area times velocity because we've got the area term there and then x over t is giving us a, a, mean, a longitudinal velocity so as well as being able to calculate flow rate from volume over time we can also get the flow rate from the area of the flow times by the velocity of the flow. So now we know that Q equals U times A we can do the first part of this calculation because we know at point number one the area, the, sorry, the velocity is 0.01 meters per second. The area is 0.1 meters squared. So the flow at point one is 0.001 meters cubed per second. So we've been able to get that flow just by timesing the cross-sectional area of the pipe, the velocity of the fluid. So what we also know is if this is a steady incompressible flow then we know that the flow rate or discharge must be the same at every point inside this system. So we know that Q1 must be equal to Q2 and we know that therefore U1A1 must be equal to U2A2. So what that means is we actually already have the flow at this point. So we know that Q2 has got to be the same as Q1, which is 0.001 meters cubed per second. So we know that Q2 equals Q1, which at this point here, if we rearrange the equation Q equals U over A, is going to be, uh, so this Q1 is going to be A2, U2, and to get U2, what the question is asking for, we just need to rearrange Q equals u times a. So u2 is actually going to be q1 divided by a2. So from continuity we can work out the velocity at point 2 which is going to be 0 0.001 meters cubed per second which is both q1 and q2 divided by the area at point 2 which is 0 0.01 meters squared, which gives us a velocity at point 2 of 0 0.1 meters per second. This also gives us quite a nice representation of what we mean by continuity. So at the first point in this system, our area is 0 0.1 meters squared and our velocity is 0 0.01 meters per second. So we've got a large area and a small velocity. At point number 2, we're making the area much smaller, so the area is now 0 0.01 meters squared rather than 0 0.1 meters squared, so the area has been reduced. We know the flow must be the same, so the only way to keep the volumetric flow rate the same when the area has been reduced is for the velocity to increase. So at point number two, the velocity increases from 0 0.01 meters per second 
to 0.1 meters per second. So this is an example of how we can use the principles of continuity to solve uh, velocities along a pipe with changing cross-section.